So in all those passages that people used to say that we're, caught, we're allowed to, you know, these are examples of us having the authority to decree. It's an English word. You guys, don't you guys do English? But in every single one of them, without question, there is a poor interpretation of the Bible. Every single one that someone is using to defend the fact that we can pray and decree is a bad interpretation of Scripture. You just said the Bible says, some people say, one of the most popular ones, we bind, has nothing to do with prayer. The context of the passage, Jesus Christ is talking about church discipline. He's, there's, two, there's two portions. You have Matthew 16, Matthew 18. One, Christ is talking about his apostles and the authority he will give them to determine what Christian truth and doctrine is. The other one, Christ is talking to the church and saying, you have the authority to declare that someone with forgiveness is withheld from someone. So if a church determines that the way someone is living or something they believe means that they're no longer Christians and they push them out of the church, that person is not forgiven. By the way, this is not even, this is why I'm angry at, because it's not even complex. There's complex passages in the scripture that I could say, you know what, that's actually quite complex, you know, so I can see why you missed it. And I'm not talking about Christians generally, I'm talking about preachers. If you're going to be a teacher of the word, there's just some things that you shouldn't miss. Now, I can, we can do it, we can miss anything. But if I miss something that's obvious as a teacher, I have to take it, I have to accept. Someone has to come to me on Sunday and say, Kenny, that's embarrassing, bro. You're meant to be, the, you're a pastor. We're paying you for this as well. Like, you, you, did, you really miss that? And I'm going to have to put my hands up and say, you know what? I need to cut my Netflix time or something. You know, so it's like, preachers shouldn't be missing that. Preachers should be going around building a whole theology on a passage that has nothing to do with praying, almost. Like, and you still were able to teach from it that you can pray this way. It's the, it's, it's, first of all, it's the fault of preachers, without question, and teachers who teach that nonsense. And then, by the way, there's many verses we can say, and all of them fall flat on their faces. You know, um, you're more than overcomers. So, Jesus Christ is talking about um, the fact that in him, we have, we've overcome the world. In him, nothing can take away our salvation. It has nothing to do with decreeing. He's talking about, Christ is talking about his people who are, he's saying that to his people who are dying. He's saying to his people who are poor. He's saying that to his people who are sick. You are more than overcomers. He's saying that to them. It's nothing to do with decrees or whatever. Um, uh, Jacob, first of all, none of us are fighting with no angels. You have to be very, you have to be very careful. Jacob is fighting with a man. None of us are fighting with men. And Jacob is not decreeing anything. He's, he's almost, he's pleading with this person. So you have to bless me. He, he feels like there's a, there's a sense in which this superior person is committed to blessing them. And he says, I need to get that blessing. Jacob is a beautiful picture of how we should pray. Of course, we, we, should, we should wrestle with God for the promises he's made to us. No question. God has never made you a promise that you can decree what you want. Has he made you that promise? If he makes you that promise, yeah, do it. But, but what does Jacob mean? Jacob means that we should confidently beg, plead with God for everything. Ask God to bless us. Ask God to open the door. But the idea that we can um, decree things and manifest things. But it's not, it's not the same thing. Like, it's just like the tone. Of, like, I think you're saying the same thing, but it's like the tone in which you're saying it. So, Sorry, I can't hear it. I can't hear so it. it's like... Is it not the same outcome? It's just a different tone. So uh, pleading versus decreeing. Like you're, you're still asking God, but the, the... If you're asking God, ask him. Yeah, but the latter is just confidently asking God. By the way, confident, confident like, asking is beautiful. Yeah, you should confidently ask. But me confidently asking you is not the same thing as commanding you. If I confidently ask Deji to lend me 10 pounds, I know that guy's stingy, he won't give it to me anyway. <laughs> If I come to any ask Deji, can you, that's, there's a confidence. You know what that means? That means I do it without shame. That means yeah. I do it with, let's say I'm someone who's, I'm iffy about asking people for money because I know how people are. But I ask Deji for money. The confidence is the fact that I trust him enough to trust his generosity, to trust that he's not going to go and message someone, oh, you know, okay, let's ask him for 10 pounds. I trust him enough. That's, a, that's confident. To decree it is to say, Deji, go and get me 10 pounds. It's totally different things. Hey, Deji, go and get me. Now, I might say, Deji, go and get me 10 pounds. Deji would actually do it. He's a nice guy. He was going to go and get a 10 pound. But those are to two totally different things. One, one of them is me showing that I'm at Deji's mercy almost and I need his help and genuinely asking that. The other one is 
Mags turning around and saying, ah, you're Rudo. Look how you talk to him like he's your, he's your, like you control things. That's exactly what the Korean is doing. It's giving Christians the idea that they control things. That's why stuff like the Korean and all that kind of stuff can only ever happen in a church where they, 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 they belittle the sovereignty of God. Where people basically want to claim that God doesn't want bad things to happen to Christians. God, you know, people are decreeing that they're not going to be sick. Decreeing that they're not going to be as if God is not sovereign over that. We are not sovereigns. We're not, we're not co-sovereign with God. He's sovereign. He does what he wants in the universe. And you're, yes, someone says, oh, my decreeing is competent asking. But the language you're using is poisonous. Even if in your heart you actually mean, I'm just confidently asking God. I hear that. Fair enough. But no one can hear your heart. Yeah, but people can hear, people, God can hear your heart, people can hear your words. So God sees your heart, and yeah, God's going to hear your heart, fair enough. By the way, not everyone who does that is actually, some people's heart is, is as dirty as their words. But yes, God can hear your heart, but people can hear your words. And I'm telling you, you can see how, how people use it to take advantage of God's people as well. You know, if I'm a man that stands here, the cream, if I was the cream, if I was the cream every Sunday and the cream Tuesday, the way some of you guys are talking to me, you never talk to me like that. You know, like, especially Max, you know, you never talk to me like that because you're going to think, oh, this guy has power. <laughs> he's the cream stuff. And that's exactly what happens. Now he's the cream, so we all have a kind of awe and fear of him. And before you know it, the pastor's playing with Jesus Christ for mediator and like authority in our lives. And, you know, that kind of stuff happens. But yeah, as I said, it's a matter of, we have a duty to uphold proper teaching of the faith. And I don't think that is a proper teaching of prayer in any way. There's so many verses on prayer in the Bible, like so many. None of them come close to, to, to having that fragrance. None of them. Yeah? Okay. We're, we're good? Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, last week, next, the last session is next week, so do try and come out if you can. Um, but yeah, last week on, on the Doctrine of Justification next week. Let me close in prayer tonight. Oh, blessed God, we thank you.